It's a gorgeous day in the nation's capital. It seems like summer has finally arrived in central Canada. And hello, I'm Peter Mansbridge. It was on May 2nd of this year that the Conservatives won their majority, the one they had so dearly sought since they first started going for voters in 2004. They lost that one to the Liberals, a minority, and then followed it with their own minorities in 2006, 2008. Now a majority government. And in the next few minutes, we're going to find out in the speech from the throne read by the Governor-General, David Johnston, just what exactly the Stephen Harper government has planned for the next four years. Well, before that starts, let's get an idea from Parliament Hill. Let's start with Evan Solomon, the host of Power and Politics, who joins us from the lobby just outside the House of Commons. What's the, uh, what's the mood there, Evan? Well, Peter, I know you've just come back from Vancouver, where the mood in hockey-crazed <laughs> Vancouver is nuts. Well, it's not quite playoff fever here. This is kind of like a hockey game where the home team knows it's going to win. This is Stephen Harper's majority. Uh, you know, on budget days and speech from the throne days past, there was a lot more trepidation and nervousness because they weren't sure what was going to happen and what would pass. Today, when I talk to Conservatives, they feel confident. They know their budget is going to pass. They know that their agenda, which will include all those things we've talked about so often, their law and order uh, legislation that they talked about, their budget, They'll talk about the war in Libya. They know it's going to pass. So the mood here, Peter, there's a lot of confidence. There's a lot of happiness. And then, of course, on the other side, the NDP. I'm seeing all sorts of new faces on the NDP, and we're all busy studying all the new NDP MP faces. They are very excited. They're awe-inspired to be here. This is a, a brand-new day here in Parliament. There's lots of firsts. First day for Elizabeth May. She's excited. So, Peter, there's a lot of excitement. But to stick to hockey, this day... The home team feels it's got it in the bag. All right. We'll be back to Evan. Evan will have some guests for us to talk to as well uh, in the next few minutes. It, this is a two-chamber kind of day, the speech from the throne. The House of Commons, of course, where the MPs who've just been elected will take their seats. But down the hall is where the speech from the throne is actually read. It's in the Senate, the Senate chamber. And outside the Senate today is Rosemary Barton. Uh, moved down to that end, another chamber that is, has a conservative majority. Well, this is where all the, the pomp and circumstance takes place. This is where the Governor General arrives uh, with the Prime Minister, and this is where all the MPs, and I think we'll see a lot of those new faces come down and want to check it out for the first time themselves. They've never been part of it, so it's exciting from that perspective. But in terms of content, Peter, uh, it, no one is really going to be overly surprised from what they hear today. I mean, this is a Prime Minister who does tend to slip little tidbits into uh, throne speeches that catch people off guard. We remember, of course, the infamous O Canada change, potential change to the lyrics of O Canada that sort of backfired on them. But in terms of the broad strokes, because we've just come out of an election, we expect that the throne speech will really reflect what we heard throughout the election. And so no one is really on the edge of their seats, if you will, in terms of what we're going to hear from the Governor General today. It'll be interesting, as, as Evan said, though, because it's his first one, stylistically, um, how he goes about reading it, how he delivers it, um, how he enjoys it. And we're we're told that he's probably not going to show up in the Landau, unfortunately. Even though it's a beautiful day here, he's going to drive up in the car. There were some people joking that maybe he could ride up in his bike because he does like to bike, but uh, that might take away from the ceremony a little bit. <laughs> and he, of course, the Rosemary's talking about, once again, is uh, David Johnston, the Governor General, who just took over the Governor General spot uh, late last year, 2010 in October, so not quite at his first anniversary yet, but as Rosemary mentions, it is his first speech from the throne reading so it'll be interesting to watch that angle let's bring in our or that will be um well that's not the peace tower that would be it's either the east block or the west block uh, of parliament hill because the main peace tower flag uh will at any moment if it hasn't already changed the governor general standard as she as he arrives on uh, on parliament hill along with uh, sharon johnson the governor general's wife they will be met by that is the um, uh, the east block of Parliament Hill. It's all uh, been refurbished as most of the uh, buildings on Parliament Hill have been in the last uh, 10 to 20 years. Been a lot of work going on there. Even the Peace Tower, you may recall, a few years ago was surrounded uh, by uh, construction work as they were cleaning up uh, Parliament Hill and the buildings on it. You hear the 2:30 bells uh, chimed right now. 
at the Peace Tower. And any moment now, the Governor General will arrive on the Hill. Gorgeous day like this, you would expect he'd be in the horse-drawn uh, Landau, but uh, Rosie telling us a little while ago that the uh, latest plans had him arriving uh, by limousine. Members of the uh, band stationed there. This is a day, historically it always is, a day of both pomp and pageantry as well as the politics that go along with a speech from the throne. It's an important part of the institution. We actually get a chance. It's one of those rare days where we get a glimpse inside the Senate, Senate the second chamber. The difference between the two chambers, of course, the House of Commons is elected members. That's what we went through on May 2nd, the federal election in the Senate, and this was also brought up in the discussion that uh, Rosemary Barton just had with the Liberal uh, Senate leader, the issue of term limits. These senators are appointed. They had no election. It's where the Governor General sits. It's where the Queen sits when she is in the country and reading the speech from the throne. Uh, because they go to the Senate, because they're not allowed in the House of Commons, because it is for the people and their representatives who have been elected by the people. So you have the two chambers and you have this debate going on now about changing the Senate. Not just the uh, term limits for how long senators would be there, but how they actually arrive in the Senate. Will there be elections in the provinces to uh, elect senators to that chamber? It would totally change the very nature of the way things operate on Parliament Hill. Uh, we may be heading into a long, drawn-out debate on that issue, and it becomes, as Evans pointed out before, this becomes a constitutional matter. And you've got to get the agreement of a certain number of the provinces that represent a certain percentage of the population. And uh, hello, Meech Lake, Charlottetown. We really go back to those kind of days and those kind of debates and those kind of first minister's meetings. Uh, who knows whether uh, that is a road that we are uh, possibly, potentially, uh, heading down in the next little while. So we'll see all that. And it's on the minds, obviously, of some people uh, on a day like this. How far will this speech from the throne go in describing the kind of changes uh, that may take place in the Senate, as well as all the other issues that you've heard both Rosemary, Evan, and Terry uh, before that uh, discussing that could come up in this speech. Uh, Evan, if you're still online, uh, just on that point about the Senate, simply because this is one of those rare days when we get a glimpse inside, see senators uh, at work, sometimes even at sleep in their seats in the Senate chamber, <laughs> and I've seen that happen on a speech from the throne day. What, uh, how far do you, do you think we're going in this four-year mandate of this government in discussing changes to the Senate? Well, I think you said it best, Peter. Once you start talking about this, there's sort of two levels. There's the political level as the ceremony begins to start and you watch the limousine. The political level is the base wants some action. This has been a long-standing call from back in 1993 in the reform days. They want to either a triple E Senate or abolish the Senate, but at very least term limits. Term limits seems possible. They may be able to get term limits without any constitutional challenge, but that's the word. It's a hornet's nest once you open that up, and it has to do with Quebec feeling they want uh, representation in the Senate, uh, Atlantic Canada. Once you get into the complicated world of constitutional business, uh, no one can predict the outcome, and we all know that from each lake. Not only that, in the next year we'll have six provincial elections, so that whole provincial federal relationship will change. My gut here, Peter, is there'll be something on the political angle about term limits, and that, for now, will be a modest goal so the base gets something. Peter. All right. Thanks, Evan. Well, there he is, the Governor General, David Johnson, arriving on Parliament Hill for what will be the first reading by him of a speech from the throne. And he is accompanied by his wife, Sharon Johnson, and the two Johnsons who have been very active now uh, in their role from Rideau Hall and traveling the country, traveling the world. Uh, the Governor General has been to Afghanistan. He was in Britain during the uh, royal wedding just a short time ago. He now receives his first 21-gun salute with the Guard of Honor, Parliament Hill on throne speech day.
Commander of the Guard of Honor now will invite the Governor General for a quick inspection of the Guard of Honor. See that flag in the background, top right of your screen? You see it every once in a while, and you're probably wondering, what is that? Uh, the blue stripes in it. Um, there's a fellow who has long campaigned for a different flag than the one we have. He turns up uh, often on uh, days like this and uh, has his flag, uh, which he waves, and it looks uh, to many like it's part of the official um, kind of decoration of Parliament Hill. It isn't. It's uh, one individual who is uh, trying to uh, put his ideas forward as to what he thinks should be reflected uh, in the nation's flag. Having mentioned the, uh, the Governor General's love of hockey at a time of year when many Canadians are fascinated by what's happening in the Stanley Cup playoffs and certainly the uh, rallying around actually two teams in Canada this week. Both the Canucks have done extremely well and I was lucky enough to be up there the last couple of days and just watched how that city is responding to their team. And also in Winnipeg uh, with the rebirth of the NHL uh, in Winnipeg and a team uh, beyond the ice there by this fall. But the Governor General's background, Evan mentioned his, his time in hockey. He was a very good hockey player. Not just a good hockey player, but a very good hockey player. He played at Harvard. He also played at the University of Cambridge. He was twice selected uh, for the All-American hockey team. And he's a member of Harvard's Athletic Hall of Fame. And uh, trust me, they don't give those distinctions out uh, easily. Uh, and he still gets on skates and, uh, and enjoys it. Great rink at... Uh, at Rideau Hall in Ottawa, the Governor General's residence. The field guns still firing their uh, blanks, of course, uh, to form the 21 gun salute. Few words to a couple of the members of the Guard of Honor. Everything found in order as the uh, Queen's representative now heads back to take one final honor from uh, the Guard before heading into the Parliament buildings to begin the day's work of the speech from the throne. Members of the band. Who have often been passed by in the uh, by former governors general. It's usually just the uh, honor, the guard of honor that gets the formal inspection and the, the chat, but uh, this is something that the new governor general has sort of added to the moment. Saying hello, hello to uh, those who have been providing the accompanying music. Final salute before entering the problem. of formal greetings uh, inside. This is directly beneath the Peace Tower, the center block of our buildings. <laughs> Line up going in, I guess they're checking IDs. Uh, that was a bad joke. All right. The 
This is the uh, acting usher of the Black Rod, Blair Armitage, who accompanies the Governor General and his wife, Lee Harpers. Hi. Very good. Very good. You got some Western sunshine, huh? Yes. Hi, Marjorie. How are you? I'm very well. Great day to reopen, huh? Oh, it surely yes, is. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Marjorie Jackson, how are you? Good to see you, the Governor of the Senate. Terrific. You bet. None better. Raina Tinchuk, the uh, good Chief good Defense Staff. Bill Elliott, well, the head of the RCMP, the Commissioner. Well, I might want to kiss the Commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> Governor General now forming the uh, first procession that heads to towards the Senate chamber, but not directly, because he'll be uh, slipping out of view in a few moments' time because he gets hooked up with a wireless microphone and gets everything in order before heading into the Senate chamber. down the Hall of Honor. If you kept walking in this direction, you'd end up in the uh, parliamentary library. But they uh, veer off shortly to the right here, to the offices behind the Senate chamber. And here we go, having a look inside, that peek inside the Senate chamber. There's Senator Wallen, who uh, Rosemary Barton was talking to a little earlier. Many of her Senate colleagues on the uh, conservative side saw one of them operating his mobile device there. No rules against that. Rosemary's the expert on those kind of things. Do they, do they ever actually try to stop people from using those inside either the Senate or the, the, the House of Commons chamber? Well, not yet, and bite your tongue, because uh, <laughs> I don't want them to stop, because otherwise I can't talk to them while they're down there. <laughs> you know, I, I seem to recall at the beginning when these things became popular, uh, which I guess is a while ago now, that there was some initial attempt to... Uh, to prevent members in both these houses from from using them, but it, it obviously didn't seem to, <laughs> to yeah, go I anywhere mean, because they rely a on lot them of now. them. A lot of them tweet from the floor too, which is which is nice actually because it gives you sort of a behind the scenes view of what's happening either during question period or in the Senate. And a lot of them not only use Blackberries, but a lot of ministers have iPads now. They've got all their briefing notes on the iPads, so I think they'd have have a hard time stopping them from using them. Six of the uh, justices of the Supreme Court in their robes. Now, as, uh, as Terry mentioned earlier, you, you know, often on a big sp speech from the throne day, this place is packed uh, on the floor. There are all kinds of guests from, uh, um, you know, past governments, former prime ministers, special dignitaries. Premiers sometimes, uh, and that center aisle full as well. But this one, uh, not so much. Uh, I guess partly because it was, you know, it became so predictable. And the advanced billing to this is it's going to be a short session, this opening session of this parliament, just for a few weeks. It'll be a broad outline. The budget on Monday, much the same as the budget uh, uh, that didn't get passed before the uh, election was called. Because it seems like it's not quite the, you know, day of excitement that often uh, throne speeches have been. Terry, you want to weigh in on that? I know you're watching. Yeah, it, it, it's, uh, yes, I am, and it's, it is deja vu all over again, of course. It's not just the throne speech, but also the budget will be familiar, and it's going to be a, a, a really anticlimactic for a lot of people. Uh, of course, the Senate chamber will fill up once the MPs get in. Uh, at least you won't see quite so much of the red carpet. Uh, but it's not a complete snooze, though, because, I mean, you've already touch touched on 
uh, some of the issues which are extremely, which are simply too big to handle in a minority parliament, like uh, democratic reform. Remember, you know, as you pointed out earlier, Peter, uh, some of these uh, changes, if they're passed, like uh, term limits for senators, for example, like uh, more MPs instead of 308, you might have 338 to uh, accommodate growth in Ontario 